Hey guys and welcome to the Iron Mechanic! Today we're going to design a hypercyclical reduction drive used in a mexoskeleton for after-stroke therapy. This is a project of a German student and I'm going to design this reduction, a 1 to 300 reduction. It needs to be small, it needs to be light and it needs to be 3D printed. So, I decided to go for a Hypercyclical reduction drive. If you want to learn a little bit more before starting this video, go check out my first video about this team. I've done this in Fusion 360 and it took me 56 minutes exactly. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and enjoy. So, first, we'll need to do some math. I want a 1 to 300 reduction but that's physically impossible with a hypercycle reduction drive. So we're going to need two 1 to 17 reductions stacked on top of each other to achieve a 1 to 286 reduction. For achieving a 1 to 17 reduction, we need 18 pins on the outer disc and 17 teeth on the inner disc. And uh, the diameter of the outer disc will be 68.75. How I found it out, you'll find links to different sites if you're interested and to my blog if you want more detailed information. So, now go ahead and do some CAD. First, we're designing the disc. So first, we're gonna draw a new sketch and draw our 68.75 circle. Then we are putting the diameter of 6 pins on the exterior and multiply them by 18 with a circular pattern. If you want basic information about Fusion, I have a playlist now on the info box that you can learn the basics. Now I extrude this. Some problems choosing it all. So, yeah, take a random number. <laughs> and make a new body, a new component, actually. And now you draw another new sketch and make the exterior disk random size. Now I make a center diameter for the shaft to pass through and adding material. So that's the basic. Now I want to add some little lashes. Yeah, I draw them really quickly. And multiply them all around times four. Now I extrude them and make some fillets to make it look nicer. That's also adding to the component. You don't need to choose the part which is already in the existing part. Now fillet this. I think there's a better way to do this, but yeah. And now we make our second component, the disc. And for that I just created a new sketch and made it a little offset of 2.675 I think. I found this out by trying, tinkering around. I don't know if there's any formula. If you know it, put it in, into the comments please. Now I made the circle diameter a little bit bigger. I adjusted it later on the base. And now I draw the outer circle. I found this also by doing the math at the beginning of the video. And now I'm going to extrude that so that we have our new component. So that we don't have this the old piece disturbing us in the background. 
By the way, the, I made the bigger uh, diameter uh, build line by hitting X on my keyboard. But the build line disappeared by uh, extruding this part. So, yeah, I draw it again and I could have done this better. You're always learning, especially in CAD. So, yeah, here we are making it a build line. If you make it a build line, uh, if you extrude something, you don't extrude it, uh, you don't extrude the build lines, so it ignores the build lines. And yeah, I was, I was trying around a few things, and now we are drawing the, the teeth, actually. We made 17 of this, simply by pedaling it in a circular pattern. And now it's time to choose them all. Ah, I first tried to draw a spline and other stuff, but I ended up doing a, a, a half circle because it's the easiest way to get it to fit perfectly. It was actually the second time trying to design a hypercyclical reduction. That's also why I found out the 2.675 at the beginning, the offset. Now I choose everything and I unchoose the center. Here I forgot it. And yeah, it closed the hole. So now I choose everything and unchoose the center. Don't forget this little part and here we go and that's basically it now you need to make the cam the shafts all this stuff but you also need this this is the part who will take the force out of it the transmission to the next stage or to the final arm it will take the wibble wobble out of the thing. so here you take a rather big diameter, I took 13 and also pedaling it around 5 times I think and extruding this material away. If I'm not clear, post the questions down in the comments, I will respond to everything and trying to make it better the next time. Now it's time to draw the axis and the cam. Just drew uh, a diameter of 9 I think so that we have enough wobble or oh, 10, 10 actually. And also pound it around 5 times, extrude it. A little bit less then the thickness of the disc so that it don't scrubs the other surface. Now we simply add our material, our disc to it. I'm pretty sure that I'm not clear enough. So here I made a three point circle because I lost the center point. I could have done it better and easier but ah, that's actually what I did. So yeah, I was trying around, I was tired, this was late at night, I think. Because my computer clock is a little bit offset. And we're almost done. Almost. Yes, here we are. And adding material. Yeah, that was shitty. No, 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 it's better. So, we had a problem with the discs and the cams turning freely because they, they was, I glued them in place. So here I made a hexalope hole in it. Uh, on Fusion it's actually called a polygon. So that it can't turn like a Nimbus key. 
So, thanks for watching this little build. It will do, hopefully, good things for stroke patients. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay tuned. Bye.